Hello, today we're going to be looking at module 3.2, Graphing Systems of Equations. Uh, we're going to be filling out the guided notes page that is accompanying this video. Uh, so make sure you either print off a copy of the guided notes before you get started, or you can just copy this down on your own sheet of paper. <laughs> systems of Equations. It's a collection of two or more equations with the same variables. Solutions for systems of equations are the variable values that make every equation true. So three ways to solve systems of equations, and this is what we're going to be looking at in the next two to three videos. Uh, this video and then two more videos after this. But those three different ways of solving equations are we have graphing, we have substitution, and we have elimination. All right, so just kind of letting you know where this is gonna be. Uh, this is gonna be 3.3a, which is gonna be the next video you watch, and then 3.3b. Uh, they each have their own set of guided notes and their own video, just kind of breaking things up. That way it's not too much at one time. So whenever we're graphing a system of equations, there's three possible solutions. There's the possibility of one solution, which would mean the lines intersect in one location. There's the possibility of no solution, which means the lines never intersect, they're parallel. And then there's infinite many solutions. That means inter many intersections. That means the lines are actually overlapping. They actually look like uh, one line, okay? So let's look at these three right here, and we'll talk about each one of them. All right, so first of all, let's identify the slope of the first equation up here, the slope and y-intercept. So y is equal to 2x minus 5. All right, the slope, or m, is going to be 2, so that's going to be 2 over 1. And then the y-intercept is going to be the b. All right, so that's negative 5. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this one. So we'll go to negative 5 on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll draw a little dot. All right, now from here with our slope, our rise and our run, we should go up 2 and over 1. 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 We'll kind of continue this pattern for a little bit. Okay, so there's my line. All right, let's connect it with a line. Don't worry, that's going to move back into its right place. Whenever I bring it off the screen. Okay, so here we are. All right, so now let's look at the next one. We're going to have y is equal to negative x plus 6. All right, so our slope is going to be negative 1 or negative 1 over 1. And then our y-intercept is going to be 6. So we'll go up to 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From here, it goes down one and to the right one. So down one to the right one. Okay, so now if we graph this one, Choose a different colored line. Let's go with purple. Okay, so we can see the lines there where they cross. All right, so it has one solution. They cross in one location. So that's one solution. All right, so let's look at the next one. Okay, we're not gonna, we're just gonna pull this down right here. For the first one, our slope is two-thirds, and our y-intercept 
is going to be 5. So we'll go to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we'll put a dot. From there we go up 2 and to the right 3. So up 2, 1, 2, 3. Up 2, 1, 2, 3. We can go in the opposite direction. We'll go down two into the left three. One, two, three. Okay, let's connect that with a line. Okay. Okay, let's look at the next one. Our slope is going to be two thirds. Our y-intercept is a negative 3. So we'll go down here to negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and we'll put in a dot. From there we go up 2 to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. Up 2. Up 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so now let's connect that one with a line. Okay, so we can see here these two lines are parallel. They're just going to continue to go in the same direction. They're never going to intersect. Think about railroad tracks. So since they never intersect, there is no solution. One quick way of identifying if it's parallel is right here. They have the same slope. Since they have the same slope, that means that they're parallel. Okay. So let's look at another one. M is going to be equal to one third for the top one, and B is going to be equal to negative one. Okay, this bottom equation is going to need some work because it's not in slope intercept form. So we have to get it in slope intercept form. So we need to divide by three. It's going to give me Y is equal to. This will be one third x minus one. So now if we look, we have the same slope and the same y-intercept for both. Let's go ahead and graph them. We're going to graph the first one. We have negative one. From there we go up one to the right three. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right, so let's go ahead and graph that line. Okay, so you can see your line here. Well, let's go ahead and graph the second line now. Well, once again, if we notice, it's got the same y-intercept. It's going to have the same slope. So all these points are going to be shared. So when we graph this line, it falls right up perfectly on top of each other. So they share all the same points. And since they share all the same points, that means there's infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions, because they're going to share all their same points, all the way to infinity. Okay, so let's scroll down. First, rewrite each equation in slope-intercept form. Usually this is the easiest way to graph it. The first one's okay. So that one is fine. The second one needs a little work. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to pause the video, see if you can put this in slope-intercept form. Okay, welcome back. So let's put this one in slope intercept form. See how you did. First thing I need to do is I need to get the x across. So I'm going to have to subtract it from each side. So it's 3y is equal to negative x plus 27. Got to get y by itself. So I'll divide by 3. So that's y is equal to a negative 1 third x plus 9. Now it says graph each equation and find the intersection. 
So let's do that. Move this out of the way so we can see. We're going to focus on this first one. We'll graph this one in red. This one's going to be in red. So we'll go to negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our slope is up 2 and to the right 1. Up 2 and to the right 1. We'll just kind of continue along here. Let's connect that with a line. That looks pretty good. Let's do the next one in green. We're going to do this one in green. So here we're going to go to positive 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's my y-intercept. I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 3. So 1, 2, 3. Down 1 to the right 3. 1, 2, 3. Down 1 and to the right 1, 2, 3. All right, now let's connect that one with the line. Okay, so we can see that they intersect here at this location. All right, well, what is that location? Well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six to the right. And then how many up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so there's my solution. 6, 7. Now what we could do to check your answer is we're going to plug in the 6 in for the X and the 7 in for the Y. If it gives us a true statement in both of them, then we're good. I'll just do one real quick. So we would say 7, because that's my Y, is equal to 2 times 6 minus 5. That 7 is equal to 12 minus 5. That's going to be 7 is equal to 7. So that's a true statement. All right, so the next one, we would do 6 plus 3 times 7 is equal to 27. Well, that's going to be 6 plus 21 is equal to 27. And that's 27 is equal to 27. All right, so it gives me a true statement for both equations, so it's a good solution. Okay, let's scroll down. I'm going to pause the video here real quick for you to try this one. Uh, just practice it. Don't worry about getting it right or wrong. Uh, we'll come back in just a second and see how you did. Okay, welcome back. I worked on this one while you were working so that we could go ahead and push this video and get it done. The top equation is good to go. It's in slope-intercept form. So my slope is 1 half. My y-intercept is negative 5. And you see that line graphed here. My bottom equation needed some work. I needed to put it in slope-intercept form. So, I moved the x across, became positive, we see that here. Then I had to divide by 2 to get the y by itself. So that gave me a slope of 1 half and a y-intercept of positive 2. And we see that blue line graphed here. Alright, so what do we notice? Alright, if we look carefully, what do we notice? Alright, what you should notice is that they're parallel, which means they're never going to intersect. So that means we have parallel lines. That means there's no solution. Because the lines are never going to intersect. And they're never going to have a point of intersection. So there is no solution for this set. Here's example three. Uh, I'm going to pause the video, give you a minute to try this one, and then we'll come back together and see how you did. Okay, welcome back. What I did was I worked on this one while you were working. That way it would speed up the video. 
The first thing I did for the top equation is you got to get it in slope intercept form. So I distributed that negative three through the parentheses. And it gives me y plus seven is equal to negative three x plus three. Then I have to subtract the seven from each side. It gives me negative three x minus four. So now we can identify our slope, negative three over one, and our y intercepts at negative four. The bottom equation was a little bit easier. All I had to do was subtract three x from each side. It gives me y is equal to negative three x minus four. Negative three over one is my slope, negative four is my y. So once again, if I look, same y intercept, same slope, these are gonna be the same line. If I graph them, they're gonna fall right on top of each other. So since they're the same line, that means that the answer here is infinitely many solutions. Because the, both lines are going to share all the same points. All right, it's the same line. All right, so that concludes this video on graphing systems of equations. Uh, you should be ready to look at the worksheet.